and it was just one of those days and I left him a one star review. They asked him to come down and listen to it and see if it sounds all right. <laughs> like the customer is supposed to know and not the technicians. And so what else can he do? This dealer is doing nothing for him, but they had so many issues and they sold so many more Kubotas that they ended up dropping them. Not having it for months on end is absolutely unacceptable. I liked doing P90X and then they had the yoga P90X for one of the days. That was 90 minutes long. Loved it. Worked so well. Can't even see you in there, dude. You blend right in. I had a viewer reach out to me pleading for help. And I get a lot of emails like this and I kind of have to take them on a case by case situation. I do want to help everybody that reaches out. Sometimes you just can't, but um, I felt like in this scenario, perhaps there's some insight that you guys can provide, maybe some help you can offer. Um, you know, I think he's reached out in about every avenue he possibly can so far. He's posted something on Tractor by Net, a lot of responses on there, some interesting information from a Bobcat dealer actually. And I think that in general, I want to frame this video as not necessarily bashing Bobcat, but this is more about when I talk about who's the better dealer near you, this is where this comes into play because anybody can sell you a tractor. Most tractors are going to work just fine. The vast majority, no matter what brand it is, are going to work just fine, but it's the dealer support after the sale that can make or break you. So this gentleman has been without his tractor that he paid cash for last year for four months now. Still doesn't have it back. The list of issues that he had has been numerous, you know, and I think there's probably a case to be made for paying cash versus doing the 0% financing. And if you have more leverage doing that as well, he happened to pay cash. It's a clean slate. He's got no real leverage there. Anyway, I'm going to go through all the issues that he listed, the things that he's done so far, and let's see what else he can possibly do to try to get some resolution and get a tractor back and working. It's just a bad situation and I feel for anybody going through this. I've gone through this same type of thing myself more than one time and sometimes you just will do anything you can just to move on from it. It's so annoying and terrible. All right, let's go through the problems here. It's, first of all, it's a Bobcat CT2035, purchased brand new in 2022, so last year. Uh, with a loader and a backhoe. First issue he mentions is a bolt that's loose and actually he finds multiple bolts that are loose, about 15 or so um, that were like finger wiggle loose. So not a huge issue. You do want to go through periodically, make sure everything's tight. That is a little bit unusual, but not the end of the world. Uh, then one night shortly after that, a 60 amp fuse is blown. He fixed that himself. Not quite hundred hours on the tractor yet. An eight inch crack on the loader arm where the upper and lower arms meet. Bobcat had it for almost two months. Their conclusion was paint was flaking, not cracked. They repaint it. He gets it back. A day later, the paint's flaking again. That's a little sketchy. He says, whatever, I let it go. Now he's got about 500 hours. So uh, to me, he is clearly working this tractor pretty good. Had it about a year, maybe not quite, I don't know. And he's got 500 hours on it. Tractor goes into regen, blowing some white smoke and lost power. Bobcat tells him something happened with the injection or computer, possibly took out a cylinder. He's been trying to trade this thing and he says since the first month he had it, gets the runaround from the dealer. First, they would take it in on trade, give him a brand new 2035 that hopefully didn't have these issues. He says that kind of came and went, they didn't do anything about it. And so now they've had this machine, he's been without it for four months, okay? And they've done nothing with it. So he's talking to the general manager at this point, has that guy's cell phone number two. And mind you, this isn't a single store dealership. They have, I think five to seven locations. And so it's a, a decent size outfit. Um, he says he's gonna, Take that 2035 in on trade, upgrade him to a 2040, problem solved, he's going to be a happy customer. So weeks or months go by, he finally hears back, now they want to take that in on trade, he has to bring 20 grand more cash to the table, they're only going to offer him 16,000 in trade value on what he paid 31,000 for brand new less than a year ago and hasn't had for a huge chunk of time. This thing just goes on and on and on. Now they're waiting on a special fitting to do a compression test. Word for word, he says, they asked him to come down and listen to it and see if it sounds all right. <laughs> like the customer's supposed to know and not the technicians. Not just that, things he didn't mention in that thread as well. He had one of the tie rod ends break off, just driving down the road, wasn't even working it. Had a drain plug come, come out on the front axle and dumped all the fluid out. I mean, this thing has been a problem child, all right? and. You know, I get a piece of equipment like that now and then. I do get a lot of equipment. I don't put 500 hours in a year on anything, right? Let alone not having it for those huge chunks of time. So it's, it's more time than that even on it. 
but he's done everything he can. He's talking to the general manager. He's posting it on, on social media. He's being really, really patient. I mean, he could get a lawyer. He could see if there's a local jurisdiction or a local branch, uh, some office that he can go and file and lodge a complaint with against his business. You know, of course he can talk to, to Bobcat corporate or whatever else, but you know, Bobcat is, as far as I know, still having their tractors made by Daydong, which makes Coyote tractors too. And they're known to have a good reputation in general. So who knows if this was a tractor that was, you know, put together the last one on Friday afternoon and, and just kind of totally just totally a lemon, but this dealer is doing nothing for him. And so I suggested reaching out to other Bobcat dealers, maybe even a Coyote dealer, see if anybody else can service this machine. I would doubt a Coyote dealer could service it, but perhaps there's another Bobcat dealership that would be happy to take a look at this. I mean, warranty work is something you get paid for as a dealership, and you would think that it's, it's welcome work to receive. A lot of places, a lot of companies are getting hit hard with trying to find good technicians, good help in general. It's been a challenge for my business too, but that's just not an excuse, especially when that general manager is not stepping up to the plate. And so as it sits, and again, I wanna bring this up again. I am, this is not about Bobcat being a bad tractor. This could happen to anybody, any machine, any piece of equipment. It doesn't matter the brand. It's about that dealer and having good dealer support. But again, this is a huge red flag, and that's why more than just the name on your tractor, it's that support. And I've heard stories about this from John Deere, from Kubota, from Mahindra, from whoever. So I know it goes on with other companies. And so what else can he do? What can you do in his position? He has the full warranty on this machine. He's being really patient, as far as I can tell. If he's putting that much time on his machine, he obviously needs to use it and needs to work it and not having it for months on end is absolutely unacceptable. Now, so this is where forums like Tractor by Net are really helpful for any tractor owner. You can post things on there and it could be a problem like this. It could be, maybe you have a project and you don't know what tool to use. You post your question, whatever it is on a forum and you get all sorts of great advice and feedback from other tractor owners that are out there too. And on this thread, there's uh, one gentleman that says he, he works for a Bobcat dealer and, you know, anybody can say anything on the internet, right? So take this with a grain of salt. I'm just gonna read you what he says. It's right out there for you to read too. He says, I am a Bobcat dealer. Doesn't make me a Bobcat tractor fanboy, just someone who lives it five days a week for 18 years. So he's kind of plugged in. Bobcat tractors then and now are built by Daydong as are Coyote tractors. Some minor differences, but they come out of the same plant. So they used to sell them at their dealership a while ago. Um, there was a five-year agreement and then there were no more Bobcat tractors. They sell some other brands too, including Kubota. They sold way more Kubotas than Bobcats, but then Bobcat wanted to get back into the tractor game. So the first go around, when they were selling Bobcat tractors, there was a, an agreement with them, but they had so many issues, and they sold so many more Kubotas that they ended up dropping them. Every Bobcat they sold had issues, there was no consistency in the failures. After six months of selling them, they dropped the line, they just weren't interested in selling problems, so I give I give kudos to that dealership for doing that. Anyways, years later, Bobcat kind of put the squeeze on them, they said, to start selling those tractors again. So they do sell them now. And as far as reliability goes, he says, they're rock solid. He has no issues there. Been burned on some lead time kind of stuff, and I can see that mm, good and bad, depending on when it was. If it was the heart of the pandemic, there's a lot of issues there. But, you know, he had a cab tractor waiting on nine months. Then it got kicked back two days before it was supposed to ship and delayed for another four to five months. So at this point, he's done promoting them. If somebody desperately wants a Bobcat tractor, he'll sell it to them. Otherwise, he's gonna push them to Kubota. Folks, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you own a tractor and you're gonna need more attachments in the future. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So folks, really, this is more of a, a PSA. Do your homework, okay? And that's why you have to look at more than just the machine machine itself, and that could be with a tractor, it could be with a skid steer, it could be with an ATV or UTV. You gotta, you gotta talk to your dealership. And man, I just recently, well, in the past year or so, I had some major issues with a Polaris Ranger, one of them that were for the kids there, uh, with one of the dealers in town here. Just their service department 
is absolute trash. A few months back, this dealership reached out for a review, just like sent me a text message, you know, probably an automated thing. And I'm not one to, to bash companies unless it's like, I, you know, I don't know. I'm just, just, I just don't like to do that. You know, as a business owner, I mean, there's, there's often ways you can work around things like that. But they asked for it, and it was just one of those days, and I left them a one-star review. Kudos to them. The service manager immediately called me and was, you know, very apologetic. You know, I explained the whole situation to him. It was really with one of their, their service guys who was just an absolute train wreck. And apparently he's no longer with the company. So they've corrected that situation. He offered me like two grand in gift cards to buy all sorts of gear and everything else. And I told him, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want anything else to do with your company. I'll, re I'll remove the review. I don't want the gift cards or anything else like that. So I, I appreciate a company for standing up and, and stepping up to the table. You know, maybe they didn't know about it in the beginning, but they can resolve something. And so you never know what's gonna work and what's gonna get some resolution. And it could be leaving a bad review that is only temporary. You can always delete that, but maybe it prompts somebody to action. You shouldn't have to get to that. You guys handle it how you want to, but you just never know how you can come to resolution maybe more quickly. And that could be one method as well. So folks, if you do have a tractor, a skid steer, or an ATV. Well, we have attachments that can help you get your projects done. We'd love to earn your business. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Check us out at goodworkstractors.com. If you enjoyed today's video, well, we'd love to have you tag along, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. Help this guy out, help the other viewers out. They're gonna go through this same kind of situation. And I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.